classes and why they aren't legitimate. Last semester, I worked at a very fine classy dining establishment known as Pizza Hut. <laughs> because of this, I had to find a way to balance my work schedule and my class schedule. So I thought, why not take an online course? I thought I could pace myself and it just seemed like an easier thing to do. <sighs> Sadly, I was mistaken. And I know many students, graduates, and educators who have seen the same problems with online courses. And I'm not the only one who thought it'd be a good idea. In fact, one out of five students are enrolled in at least one online course in America alone in college. According to Tatiana Markova's 2017 article, Quality Issues of Online Distance Learning, it is clear that educators and students encounter certain barriers that affect the overall quality of distance learning. This leads to a waste of time, money, and our very education. Having taken online courses, I have a first-hand grasp at the major problems that could cloud up the medium. I have also spoken to professors and students that have graduated from the school that say the same problems. Online courses aren't legitimate, at least just yet, and I hope I can help you rethink whether or not you really want to take one. I'm going to talk about the problems of online classes, the causes for these problems, as well as the solutions. So let's talk about the first two main problems which are students not really caring and teachers not being able to care. Students don't put much effort into online classes. And why should they? I took it because it would help me with work and I can work at my own pace. However, this led to procrastination, which then led to lower grades. And I'm not alone on this. According to the Brookings Institution, research on online schooling, who was harmed and who was helped, Online students is substantially worse than students in the same face-to-face -face course. And I can tell you I have first-hand experience. This is from a group project we did. We all had to do our own thing. I saved this because I thought it was kind of funny. Um, like Jolt, this organization aims to get more Latino voters to turn out, so do they work? One of the main objectives of organization like Jolt, which are aiming to help get more Latinos to vote in upcoming and future as you can see, it doesn't make any sense. We got a C minus on the project, and actually every project we got after we got C minus two, since we worked in the same groups. Teachers not putting enough effort, though, stems from the fact that they can't, due to the lack of a traditional learning environment. Uh, and students will see that teachers can't do this and will react and do the same. Teachers are not at fault for this, however, because one, the system is flawed, and two, it is unmanageable. And in fact, many chief academic offices agree because only 29% of them accept the value and legitimacy of online education. Now, the causes to these problems are little to no signs of a community and a lack of perceived communication between the two students and the teacher. The lack of a community in an online education course has shown to create a more uncertain learning environment. Classmates don't know each other, the teachers don't know you, and also you'll never see the teacher's specific learning style. Also group work, if there is any, is gonna be much more difficult. According to Anna Harrington's 2010 article, Adapting to Fit the Technology, Problems and Solutions for Technology-Based College Classes, a concept called muting occurs. Basically, muting is, when, muting is when students don't acknowledge teamwork and instead take a backseat. Sometimes they question whether or not they should participate, but for the most part, there is no communication being made. And because of this, a lot of the times I would actually have to do an assignment by myself. And sometimes this would take hours because the group wasn't really there to help. A lack of perceived communication described in Gupla Ganesh's 2015 article, are face-to-face -face classes more effective than online classes in empirical examination? Perceived communication refers to students' perceptions of a teacher's communication skills. Without this, teachers and students cannot be on the same page, whether it's because of a clashing teaching style or because of a lack of understanding, a lot of the college courses are gonna topple over 
kind of like one of these. So the two solutions are a community being established as well as students rising up and maybe helping out with the situation. In Balbini's 2018 article, Development of a Scale of Sense of Community in University Online Courses, we learned that creating a sense of community in online classes leads to a more positive learning experience and also a more positive development for the future of online courses. And a lot of things that can help with this would include things that already exist, such as Google Classroom, which I've used in my junior year of high school and I thought it was really, really helpful actually. Students have to help each other out in this situation though. We can also maybe go to the library and reserve those rooms and actually work together face to face instead of <coughs> online on a computer screen. The second point can be solved in a number of ways. We can email the professor. And after emailing the professor, actually, I felt more confident. I felt like I was acknowledged. A lot of the times he would respond to the work I did and actually tell the other students to help out. And sometimes even when I would procrastinate, the other students would message me and tell me that the teacher was the one telling me that I should put more effort into my work. There's also a program called Zoom that we actually started using in some of the clubs in UTRGV that's very, very helpful. And it's a very professional uh, voice video chat software that I think may actually help in group work. As stated before, online courses aren't perfect. And I don't think they're a legitimate way of learning, at least just yet. I feel like as students, we'll be able to help the issue of online courses, make it better, and I don't want you to boycott the idea of online courses. Instead, I want you to rethink whether or not you want to take them. These issues aren't hard to come by, and the school is not unaware of 